Hi. Good evening, everybody. Okay. Yeah. Good evening, everybody. It's a pleasure to have everybody on the call today. Kindly confirm if you can hear me. I, I can. Yes, right. can you hear me now? Yes, thank you. So good evening, everybody. My name is Oyindamola Adeleye. I'll be hosting today's webinar on behalf of Baka and the Go Light community, right? So I know we are starting ahead of time. This is just to intimate us to know our expectations. So where am I here today, right? I'm here today to host the webinar, obviously, and also to facilitate this session, right? Okay. Um, I am the brand ambassador for Baka, that is becoming a chartered accountant and go light. And as some people might know, and for people that don't know, I'm also the founder of AGH Consult. So today we are here for a, please, I'd like to see your reactions, kindly make use of the reactions. Um, I want to thank you, thank you, please give me, give me the reactions. <laughs> Uh, wow, 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 wow. Ah, we've not started. Somebody's already raising and the person should calm down, please. Let the person calm down. Okay, so thank you all for honoring our invite for this masterclass. Our trainer will be joining shortly, but before he joins, um, okay. That's so happy. I'm I'm so glad to be doing this today. I'm so glad to be doing this. I'll be oh, I'll be introducing the founder of Baka and Go Light, right? And some of us would have been aware of, and for people that don't know what Go Light is, we'll be finding out in a minute. So this masterclass on how to overcome your fears, how to overcome failures in ICANN, right, is hosted by Baka. That is becoming a chartered accountant and Go Light in partnership with Go Light. So, I would like to take expectation like, okay, when you saw the flyer, when you saw the invite, what was your thoughts? I would like just two people to unmute themselves. So you can just raise up your hand and let us know your expectation. Then while others can use the chat room to just tell us your expectation. So if they say when the purpose of a thing is not known, abuse is inevitable. So in order to prevent abuse, in order to prevent us from just wasting time today, I know Time is precious and we came here for a purpose and we must achieve that purpose. So I'd like two people to just on media mic and just raise up your hand. I'll check based on the person that first raised up. Or you can use the chat room to also state your expectation for today. Because I want us to sh start seven sharp and we keep to time. This webinar is to last one hour, 20 minutes, and we are done, right? And I know a lot of people in the backer community has already dropped questions for our trainer. Like you guys want to bombard our trainer, but he's up for it. He's up for it. Okay, Omolara, I'm seeing you, and you can unmute yourself and take the floor. Okay, good evening, ma. Hi, Omolara, how are you doing? Fine, ma. Sorry, this place might be noisy because I'm on the road. Okay. okay. Well, when I saw the post, I can remember that before I even started ICANN at all, like before I made any attempt at all, it was this same post that i saw that encouraged me to like oh let me just take a step towards starting at least let me just start even if it's it is one let me start and i can remember i talked to baka uh himself then like i chatted him privately and he encouraged me to just start and i started and to god be the glory i've been able to finish my skills and i passed my skills so when i saw this post again i felt like oh let me just join. You know, it's like a form of encouragement to everyone and to me particularly. And that was why I feel that like, let me just join. And this will also start, I mean, serve as a stepping stone for me to pass my final papers. Wow. Thank you so much, Omolara, for that feedback. So I'm sure you've been following Baka and you know that the founder is Sean Daniel, right? And this is one of, this is even the major reason why the backer was set up to encourage people to take that leap because if you see people always plan that i'll write i can today i'll start tomorrow but they don't end up starting so backer is 
has created a community to encourage people and i'm really really grateful to god for your testimony these are this this is one of the major landmark that um backer seeks to achieve right and i'm so glad maybe since you've already passed skills right when you saw the first flyer and you cleared everything then this is god telling you that professional to you clear it at once <laughs> so, I'm so, happy about that. Yeah, so we really appreciate this feedback we really really appreciate it thank you Amola. i don't know if somebody else wants to go on before we start before i call on our founder okay mr moses you can take the floor Amola, i can mute yourself thank you mr moses you can take the floor it's um, is it the deep? Okay. Is he speaking? All right. I'll just take. I'll just quickly glance through the chat room. So we have a comment from Joy. She says that I want to know how to prepare well to pass advanced audit and assurance at a go and case study too. So Joy is in the professional stage and she wants to pass. Don't worry. Our 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 um, speaker is ready. He's hot. He has even prepared slides for us. Like, ah, don't worry. You get that. You get that. So I think Mr. Moses is not talking. So we can just proceed to the next agenda. Okay. Our trainer will soon be joining. Or our, our speaker. I don't know why I'm saying trainer, but it's a master class anyways. So I'll be calling on Okay. Daniel. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Sorry. Yeah, you hey, can. Good. You can go. Good, good evening, evening, everyone. Good evening. Okay. I want to appreciate the organizers of this. Um, thank you very much for putting this together. Uh, my concern concerns icons of of a thing. Why is that someone that has done very well with um, his first degree, um, the person has not failed any course during the undergraduate program, coming to ICANN, even in the process of uh, preparation, the person that teaches is our colleague. But at the end of the day, the person will end up failing uh, a particular, a particular why exactly. person that he taught you understand or mm, mm, yes yes yeah. it's usually mm. annoying and mm. yeah so yeah. i don't really know how the marking is he what well, had the program the marking is it that is okay. or something because it's someone that has an idea, it's someone that has a knowledge that will share with okay. the expressing. By the end of the day, the person will end up feeling why the person that 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 even tap from from the knowledge will pass. I thank you so much, Mr. Moses, for this contribution. I've heard a lot of stories about this. Like you hear somebody that said that they trained somebody or they tutored somebody. You see the tutor scoring 23, and the person they train is scoring like i flying 80 something right so that's why we are here actually and i don't know why my professional colleagues were smiling and laughing when mr moses was talking about his predicament so mr. Moses, i'd like to confirm are you a tutor or are you done with your icon or like what stage are you on currently i'm still in i'm still in skis i have about two papers left oh yeah still in skills okay you cleared you cleared by god's grace yeah it can be a bit demoralizing when such happens so thank you so much for your feedback thank we are we hope to make this very very engaging so in the next 10 to 5 to 10 minutes i'll be bringing up uh sorry we've ex we've um we've uh, <laughs> what's the word now we don't have allocations for you to speak can you i already said to people and We've already um, used up the slot for the two people. You can just note your comments in the chat room. I would read it out for you. Thank you. So I'll quickly read about Sean Daniel's profile. He's the founder of Baka. In, and Bolite 2 is also, in, it, you, you will still tell us more about it, but let me just quickly read this profile. So Sean Daniel is a finance professional with 
over six years, six years experience, majorly working as an auditor, and now he leads the accounting and finance team in a fintech organization. So, Shelt is also a product of one of the big fours. I don't know if I'm to mention the name, but PwC. So you know that our founder is not small in this life. The Yoruba people should translate it to Yoruba. Our founder is not small, right? So I'm still, over the years, he has gathered practical and deep knowledge of financial reporting, IFRS, setting and monitoring controls, and leading various teams. So you can see that our founder is also a leader, right? Then he has audited two of the biggest commercial banks in sub-Saharan Africa, and he has gathered experience auditing about 40 different companies in various industries and life cycle. Wow. And he is currently on a mission to help aspiring chartered accountants become chartered accountants in the easiest possible way. Give it up for Shell Daniel. Let me see the reactions. Let me see the reactions. <laughs> My boss, you can take the floor. <laughs> Bring them. I'm not even the speaker now. Don't, don't, don't. <laughs> thank you so much, Ayla. Um, thank you, everyone. It's really good to be here. And honestly, thank you so much, everyone, for joining. And um, thank you to our speaker, David, for accepting to be here. And I'll just make this really brief. And um, I mean, for everyone joining here, it just shows like our commitment to. Thank you, everyone. Shows our commitment to to want to learn and and be better, right? And I'll just share a brief story about like why back and how we got here right so i remember in 2015 i went to babok university so i we had like a partnership with icon so i was writing just five papers in professional level right but in those five papers i wrote five diets for just five papers right i wrote advanced audit five times i had like 17 attempts in all for just those five papers alone and it was it is a lot right to think about it right i I was like an average student in uni. Most times I just read like two weeks to exam, all those kind of things. I just, I barely just found my way to finish it to one, that kind of thing, right? I wasn't, I didn't take studies too serious, but one thing I realized was that um, I can't really like onboard me in so many ways. Right? And I learned a lot, right? And I realized that me writing professional level for five different diets, it wasn't because, it was because there were some things that were missing, right? So. Because I asked myself that I wrote advanced for this five times. And that was when I wrote, wrote the most. I asked myself that did I did I actually need to write it this many times? Right? And the question was, no, I actually didn't. So the problem was the first time I wrote it to the fifth time, I was I was making like mistakes that I didn't correct. So the first time I didn't even really prepare, right? I just went to do the exam. The second time I read for like two months to the exam. The third time, I think I read, I read more, but right? throughout the first to the fifth attempt, my preparation was different, right? And the fifth time, like I read everything back to back to back, try to understand it better, try to do more things. But the problem was, if everything I did from the first, second, and third to the fifth attempt, if I did it the first time, I could have probably passed. So the the, the issue was, why did I need to write it five times before I passed? It's because I didn't do the things I needed to do. And that's exactly the problem. And that's why a lot of people take time to fail. And that's the reason why we are like, we do a couple of webinars and summits for people that want to become to that account. And because there's a simpler way to go about it, right? You don't necessarily have to write it five times before you get it. You could actually get it once if you know everything you need to do. So that's the reason why, why we like created Baka like maybe two, three years ago, just to solve that problem. Because I felt, I felt bad having to see people and see colleagues face that thing right and also like my career has also progressed because um i was a chartered accountant that's back in 2017 right i've seen people where their career is just not growing as fast as as, as it should because they are not qualified they can't get certain roles because they're not qualified right not because they don't know what they are doing so um that's exactly why we started and it's just to ensure that you don't need to fail you don't need, i feel like people sometimes people fail needlessly permit me to use that word Right, you can actually avoid it. There's no need to actually go through that process when you can avoid it, when you can do the right thing. So the major thing is just changing your preparation and ensuring that you do all you need to do. And that's the that's the reason why we built like Growlight, which is like an 
a web app basically that helps you to read consistently, take tests, pair it on accountability partner, and just ensure that you're doing all you need to do. Because the biggest problem to people succeeding, right, is doing what they need to do, right? Many it took me like five attempts for me to realize what I need to do, right? And I'm not, I'm sure that happened to some people. You realize that why did I even need to like fail this paper so many times? Like it wasn't that hard, right? The next time you probably pass it, you now did something better. So um yeah, so the I mean the last thing I just want to say is I mean use grow lights because it will help you to um and we'll put a link on the community group. And if you're not there, you can just ask for a link so you join. Right. So it's just for you to help you to prepare better and ensure that you do what you need to do. And once you do what you need to do and like reach strategically, you definitely pass, right? So um, I mean, this is not my session, it's for David, right? So um, I think that'll be it for me. Thank you so much, Oinda. Thank you to everyone. And David, we're extremely grateful that you're here. And I know that this session will be really, will be really, will be really amazing. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, our founder. Thank you so much. So the amazing thing about, I'll be calling on our speaker next. That is Mr. David. So the funny thing is I met David on Thursday for the first time. Though I've been seeing his um, post on LinkedIn. Like I'm, I'll be like, who is this? I can't talk. I'll go and check his profile again. I'm not seeing anything like I was thinking I'll see maybe he owns like an icon tutorial center or something, but I know he's an icon tutor, right? And I know he's somebody that is passionate about seeing people excel and ace their um icon exams, right? So I'll be reading his profile shortly. David is a great person, like from all the testimonials I've heard about people from people that knows him. So I'll be reading his profile shortly, and I tell you, you are in for a ride. You are in for a ride. So David Shonibare is a senior finance and account officer at the Lagos State Center for Rural Development, a parastatal under the Ministry of Local Government, Community and Rural Development. Mr. Shonibare is a seasoned financial analyst, seasoned with over eight years of specialized experience in international financial reporting standards, International Public Sector Accounting Standard, IPSAS, for those of us that we've written PSAF, so we should know IPSAS, right? Budgeting and forecasting, financial modeling, business valuation, business analysis and strategy, financial statement analysis, corporate and individual taxation, and information system audit. See portfolio now. Ah, ah. Mr. David is an associate member of both the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria, ACA, and the Chartered Institute of Taxation, ACTI. Mr. Shonibara holds an OND in accounting from the Polytechnic Ibado and a BSc in accounting from Obafemi Awolowo University. He's currently pursuing a master's degree in finance at the University of Lake. I'm not seeing the reactions. Somebody has this kind of portfolio. Uh -uh. I am what, what is going on here? Yes, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In his role with the legal state government, imagine Baba is working with Lagos State Government. Hey, Mr. David, you must drop money before you leave home. <laughs> Mr. Shadi Barra has actively participated in several budget bilateral meetings, appropriation meetings, and budget defense sessions at the Lagos State House of Assembly. His extensive experience in the public sector is driven by a passion for public accountability and a future ambition for holding public office holding a public office wow so accountant general of the federation <laughs> beyond his public sector responsibilities mr shonimbara also served as a consultant offering advisory services to smes in areas such as taxation deals and financial reporting additionally he is a dedicated educator having lectured at top tuition houses of the institutes of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria, ICANN, and the Chartered Institute of Taxation of Nigeria, CITN, specializing in strategic and advanced financial management, corporate strategic management and ethics, financial and corporate reporting and taxation. He has successfully guided numerous students to excel in their professional exams and career. So with joy, with happiness, with everything, 
with your emojis, your reactions, everything. Please let's welcome Mr. David. Wow, that portfolio was solid. That's a solid portfolio. We welcome you, Mr. David. You can take the floor while I take the back seats. And we really, really appreciate you for coming and racing, honoring our invites. Thank you. You can take the floor. All right. Thank you. Um, I really appreciate the um, introduction. And I appreciate uh, Grow Light. I want to also appreciate uh, Mr. Um, Shane Daniels for giving me the privilege to be here. I, you know, it's one thing that I really appreciate doing, seeing success of people and um, actually contributing to the success of people. Like someone actually said that uh, it's um, the, the best investment that you can actually give is investing in people because it doesn't go away years to come. Even after you have gone, people keep talking about it. So it's something I really appreciate doing. And um, whenever the opportunity comes up, I, I actually take it with open arms. I want to appreciate um uh, able to join. You know, someone that is still um maybe need something like this and has not been able to join, please kindly reach out to such person because um this session promise to be really interactive and it's going to be so insightful. Um I during my introduction, um the um very um I'm very passionate about educating people. This is something that I've been doing for five years, about 10 years now. I currently lecture at the Starwood Academy, although uh, I used to lecture at other tutorial centers, but majorly currently Starwood Academy um, because of some other applications I had to like navigate it. Um, many people have to know me from Starwood Academy and actually uh, testify to that. Over the years, I've been able to, I used to say something, I've been able to lecture um, there's no course I've not been I've not lectured um, throughout the professional level. I've lectured all the courses at the professional level. I've lectured all the courses at the professional level. I can and professional, maybe the accounts that dance can also be a member of. Um, it is something that I always welcome very well. So this evening, I'm, I'm, I'm going to just uh, do something. I have some uh, a particular slide to display here, which is going to guide our discussion. Uh, before the class, um, I was actually kind to share me some questions, and I've been seeing some questions also that many people have been talking, they've been trained, they've been talking about and all of that. Um, okay, someone is saying something. I didn't know if you want to find the quotes. Um, I don't, please, you can hear me. Um, the, the, the line is breaking a bit, and your video is not really clear from here. Yes, okay. we've been having that feedback from here. Yeah, all right. So, let me let me quickly toggle my um network. See, all right, thank you. You know, you can hear me clearly. We just have uh, good. To two. Let's let me know that I'm, I'm audible enough. Let me see. So am I audible enough now? Is it okay? Yes, it is. But the yes. video is not still clear. I don't know if it's the. Okay, I think it's getting clear. Okay, that's gone off again. Uh, the video is not that clear. All right. Yes, the audio okay. is fine. Let's, then, let's, yeah. Okay, let's. Uh, well, you'll be sharing your screen soon, right? Yes, yes, I will. I will. Okay. I'm going so to share my just, screen. I think that's fine. Yeah. We can proceed. Yeah, thank you. Okay, okay, just give me some minutes while I try to share my screen. Okay. Mm, just a moment. I'm trying to share my screen. see so once you, you can see my screen just let me know i'm actually sharing my screen now so once you can see, um, kindly let me know that you can see it okay 
Okay, just a moment. There's this network at play here. Okay. Oh, Mr. David, can you send it to me on WhatsApp? Let me help you present from here. So, in okay, case okay. anyone, yes, anyone that comes up first. Okay, okay I let think. me send it to you. Okay, yeah, it's fine. Okay, all right. Thank you. Okay, okay. Okay, all right. Are we good to go now? So, um, sorry. Okay. Yes, you are good now. Can you hear me? Can we all hear me? Yes, so I can, can see several. Okay, so I can see several ends up. I'm going to give yes. you time to talk, but uh, before we talk, I, I would like to address certain things. Um, that actually my slide, I have like five points to, to briefly talk about in the next um, Definitely, I know it's going to address some of our questions because I've seen some of those questions and it's going to, I believe it's going to address them. Uh, but um, those that's not addressed, I'll definitely give my take on them. So let's, let's get started. Um, I have a on overcome fear and examination. Um, um, sorry, David. Um, we are currently the line the the network is um lagging a bit. I don't know if you could switch or okay. Yeah, that's what let me see. Mm. Oh, So in order to you can switch off your video right to better manage the situation i think once you switch off your video mr david can you hear me um yeah okay let me try to reach him on whatsapp So sorry about that. That's No slacking, no slacking. Okay, so in the meantime, while we are getting Mr. David, we can drop some of our questions too for people that are not in the community. We'll be sharing the community link on the chat room in the chat room. Right, for people that are not in the community, because we received some questions earlier from community members. Mr. David, just um, let me know when I can stop talking. Um, we've received some questions from community members and we've sent them ahead to our facilitator, our speaker for today, right? You can, in this moment, quickly drop your questions in the chat room so that if it's something that it has also been covered in the slide mr david can also look through and also attend to so you can drop our questions in the chat room and for people raising their hands i would like to find out why is it for questions because we've not gotten to the question and answer segment right so mr david are we uh, are we good to go are we back i don't know i, I just want to test if it yes this is clearer you know? this is very clear oh. yeah okay okay yeah then 
So I have here, I'm going to be going through about five, like I said, I'm Thank going you. through about five key points um, with respect to this particular um, discussion. So the first thing is understanding fear and failure. So we are talking about fear and failure in ICANN examination. The thing is, when it comes to things like this, I always love to be very practical because when it comes to fear, when it comes to failure, I've always been there. So when I finished from, I, I, always, I always had this aspiration that I was going to be a chartered accountant before a certain age. So I was always working towards this um, right from when I was in the college and always trying to like, then I just even more, I can just um, some of the kind of questions for my SS exams and all of that. So when I got, um, I was trying to gain admission to an institution and I could not secure that, um, um, admission into the institution, which made me go for Polytechnic. Uh, Why I entered the Polytechnic, I just can do what I was doing. Oh, Mr. David, is it from my end? Yes. Mr. David, we can't still hear you. It's still lagging. Work, work on it now. Let me do something else. I'll just talk with you. All right, again. thank you. Yeah. Or if you are presenting with your laptop, you can use the mic of your laptop and maybe the network on the laptop is better or something. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Okay, okay, all right. Okay, just a moment, please. Um, Mr. David, somebody is suggesting that I, that you, okay, that somebody else should share the slides on your behalf, then you use only your audio. Um, I don't know, does that work? Um, Mr. Kenneth, I'm seeing your comments here. Will that work perfectly fine? Yeah, I think so. It, it's not talk is not is not good enough for either video and audio at the same audio. time. Yeah, so oh. you should just you should just use the audio. Then somebody else should share the slides for him. It should be better then. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Okay.
he will join us shortly so he's trying to reboot his router please let's just be patient thank you All right, thank you so much, Oinda. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate it. I think um, it's something that is really challenging, the network, but uh, definitely we're going to beat it. We're going to beat it. So I think I'm audible now. I've actually done one or two things. I think I'm audible now. Please fill me in. Yes, you're audible. All right, all right, good. So um, let's, let's, let me work with the slide um, that Oinda is presenting for me. Oinda, are you there? Hello. Oinda, are you there? Can you hear me? Yes, right. yes, meantime, yes I can. I'll just... Sorry. Okay, okay, okay. No problem. So in the meantime, I just um the thing is many of these things that we actually talk about, um fear, failure, and high kind examination and all of that. I, I don't like to treat it in a theoretical way. I like to go practical, I like to share experiences. I like to discuss some things, some strategies that have actually worked, not only for me, from, you know, this is something I've been doing for about 10 diets now. Uh, I've been lecturing and I've been inter interacting with students. Even before I got qualified, I've been lecturing. Even before I got qualified, I've been helping students with their um, um, a professional journey, trying to look at what we can do, um, assisting them with materials, assisting them with um, areas they can actually, you know, develop and all of that, just to pass their examinations. So one thing I was, um, thing I was trying to talk about the other time was, um, you know, growing up, I was this kind of person. While I was in the um, college, I was this kind of person that had this thing at the back of my mind that oh, the chartered accountant stuff. I was going to be qualified. I was going to be a chartered accountant before a particular age, and you know, that was what actually prompted me to registering for the accounting technician scheme, which was meant to be a step into me writing my ICANN professional examination. And the thing is, um, something happened. The first diet I was meant to write my ICANN, uh, my ATS examination, I had attended classes. You know, I had actually sat, you know, done all what I was supposed to do. And, you know, some weeks to the exam, I didn't register. I was scared. You know, when the owner of the tuition house that I was actually attending then came up to me, he said, what's really happening? David, why haven't I seen you um, registered for the exam? What's happening? Then I told him that I was actually scared. And I don't know if I want to continue with this. So if I wanted to do it, I was meant to write, you know, economics, um, business law, um, use of English and um, accounting then. So uh, he, he, then I remember in his words, he said something that 
um that, and that was what actually triggered me till that was more like it for me that was my watch word that was what I, I kept on using till i qualified until now many people that even know me know me with that particular word that's my mantra he said something that you know what even if you are scared of failure that um whatever you pass it belongs to you it's no longer a you know part fail one and fail all kind of system again we are very generous and i can't use this, the credit system that if people could actually get qualified during the period of um fail one and fail uh, all what is now stopping me then he said something that i still use to date that don't you think it is past once and past for life Courses, there are some particular courses I've taken that I've been got until now. I can can never call me to receipt uh, for those particular papers. No matter how I can review their syllabus, they will never, they will never call me to say, "Hey, you scored 15 this particular course, and we have reviewed it. Come and write it." So the matter is pass once and pass for life. You know, once you understand this, it will make you, it will make you sit up. You know, many times. Students believe that, oh, ICANN is actually hard, ICANN is this, ICANN is that. But the thing is, you don't need to be a genius to pass ICANN. I've seen several people that they cannot even list, they cannot even list um, certain people's shoes when it comes to education and probably their performance while they were in university or institution. They are chartered accountants. You don't have to be a genius to pass ICANN examination. That would lead me to some of the things I'll be talking about uh, today. So please, can you just move to the next slide? Thank you so much. Let's move to the next slide. Uh, I have something on the next slide saying understanding fear and failure. So, what is let's define fear and failure? You know, fear and failure is um is many people understand oh being scared or having fear um and all of that. It's maybe emotional states that you are you actually down, you're actually feeling that something is a threat. You know, the fear comes from threat when you see something as a threat, or when you see something that's oh you cannot get, or probably you feel it will be difficult to get. That's when fear comes up, right? Now, fear and failure, they are very interwoven because when you get scared, when you, are, when you are fearful, you might not have that confidence. You might not have confidence to pull certain things that you would normally have pulled with the strength that you are having, right? So fear to everybody is distant. Like me, I was, the thing is, when I when I actually started my, um, my ATS, I like to go down all the way to ATS level. You know, when I go to the class, you know, um, coming from someone who, who, someone who actually came from a school in my secondary school, my college days, I was actually one of the top students in financial accounting and all of that. And coming down to the icon level, and I, I saw a whole lot of people, a whole lot of competition, a whole lot of intelligent and very sound people. That was the major fear for me then. Then, you know, some people, their own fear is probably they, they, they don't want to, they don't want to fail. There are some people that like to have a clean slate. I've had this debate before where someone said, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to have any failure at all. So if you feel you don't want to have any failure at all, you, are, you actually have that fear of failure, then that's another thing to consider. Because see, if you're actually fearful or you're scared, you don't want to fail, I'm telling you, you might not want to press yourself. You might not want to charge yourself up, right? You need to do this um, fearful, right? Um, what I mean by fearful is you need to do this um, with that fear in mind, then holding it in yourself that, oh, I want to do this and I will do this. So what are some of the common fears in ICANN candidates? The fourth thing I like to talk about is, you know, many people believe that a particular course is hard. This is the first thing I like to talk about. I've entered a particular, I've lectured PM before performance management, although I stopped because of my time. It needed me to like sit up and do extra reading and all of that. But um, one thing is when I entered PM class, I who I had a whole lot of students talking. My it was the first class, my first class. I thought I asked students, what is what what is your expectation for this particular course? And they said, Oh, this the head that is really tough, that students really find it really hard to, to pass it and all of that. You are coming into the diet with that motive, with that preconceived idea that 
it is very tough and you cannot pass it why why are you having that particular um fear so many people fear the one of the fear is oh so many people believe oh I can is hard. Many people have shared their story that oh, they wrote certain courses so so number of times, so so number of times, and all of that. This is not taking a toll on those that have actually written papers three, four times, and all of that. But I need to say something that throughout my professional examination days, I can professional examination days, I have never written a paper more than twice. Once I write it once, I feel it. The next time I'm going to write it, I've acknowledged my what made me feel it the first time. Right, so I used to say, tell students that the thing is, no matter how scared you are, fear can come um, before the exam. Fear can come while in class. Being scared can also come even inside the exam hall, right? And that's the major reason why I, I normally give um, certain tips that can actually help you prepare yourself to deal with those um, intimidation and fear inside the examination hall. And many students will tell you, oh, I got into the exam hall and if I got blank and all of that so some, some common fears are one examination fear i'm telling you that even fear of getting um phones to actually write your kind of examination is there too right and this also affects student preparation i remember then as a student having to uh, that was the, one of the things that actually delayed me that did not make me proceed with my um my um uh, professional level immediately i was done with my ets because of font and you know i was always scared that oh if i embark on this I don't have the necessary fund to actually take care of this, right? And if I if I fail, if I fail, where would I get money to actually do this again? Do you get so many times? Many people are even scared of ah, who would support me? Who would help my parents if the year that I actually fail, they will not want to support me again and all of that. Those are common fears. Now, what is the rule of failure in success? Please, you need to pay attention to this. The thing is. I used to say something that many of the courses I referenced, because I do not like to use failure when it comes to ICANN, right? When it comes to ICANN, it is not failure, it is referencing. And that's the major reason why ICANN calls it references. You are not a failure. Because many courses, I just I used to say to you today that um, most of the courses, in fact, all the courses that I have referenced during my professional days are the courses I take with so much finesse. Now, I referenced, um, when I was in eight years, I referenced only preserve public sector accounting and finance. I work in the public sector now, can you see? And then I had not yet gotten into the public sector. And um, I referenced um, CSME, um, strategic, it used to be called MG then, but it's now called CSME, uh, Corporate Strategic Management and Ethics. I actually, I, I'm telling someone for a fact that the first business plan I wrote for an SME was the idea of management governance and ethics. It was the idea of management governance and ethics that I actually used to write, and this is because of, I referenced it. The first time I did not cover the syllabus. And I used to say something that many times the courses I've, I've actually covered the syllabus for are courses that I referenced. So there's a particular rule that failure, let me call it reference, will do for you in your guide, in your in your step to succeeding. Now, when I talk about succeeding, it goes beyond passing your ICANN examination. Sometimes ago, I was telling a group of students that, see, ICANN is, is a particular, um, professional examination that I love that I love so much because of it is not competency based. The reason why I said ICANN is not competency based is because you see other professional examinations, they will, if they don't major on auditing, they don't major on a particular area, you know, they will major on the other one. But ICANN does not major on a particular area. ICANN is so diversified that it could actually make you on certain skills that you don't know that you are actually having. So for example, I developed passion for finance, right? While I was actually writing strategic financial management, right? So look at how it, I, I referenced, I, I put there that my lowest score ever in ICANN examination was in strategic financial management. I scored nine over 100 in strategic financial management. And if I tell you, if I tell students in class, they, they, it's very hard for them to believe because of, I take strategic financial management. I also take advanced uh, financial management at ACC level. Uh, with that idea. So you look at the role that failure has actually helped me. I referenced taxation. I'm a member of the Institute of Taxation today. I referenced um, case study at the professional level also. Now you see how all of these have actually helped you get. And you see how it has actually helped me develop my or that actually helped me on my skills. And that is the major reason why I used to tell people to welcome uh, failure. Because in the real sense, failure, I, I don't know. Um, 
I, I listened to someone a lot, was to Joshua Selman. There was one of his um, talkings that he was actually talking about. Um, there's a particular required level of failure that someone needs to have gotten for him to advise you. Look at what Sheung is doing. Look at um, his story. If such a person comes to you today and is telling you, please do this, do this, you know this person is talking from a place of understanding, a place of being there. He has been in your position. Many of you here are saying that, oh, you have written PM a number of times. You have written these courses a number of times. If Sheung comes to you today and is telling you, uh, he's putting up a, a particular webinar like this, then it is something that he's doing from a place of understanding. He, he has the requirements, right? He has the right words to actually gear you up. If I'm telling you today that, oh, um, do this, do that, because of I have been there, there's a particular level of failure that someone needs to have actually carried. It is meant to be like a, a, a an experience. When you go to an organization, they watch how many years, how many years experience you have. That is what failure will do to you. It will make you um, see it in a new way, in a reformed way, right? So that is the major reason why if you are actually failing, if you're actually failing a particular course, if you're actually doing this, you don't need to be angry at yourself. You are not a failure, right? If you check many people that have actually succeeded in doing certain things today, you see that they've actually done that in over and over and over again. And that is why they've been able to attain mastery in that particular area. So that's what failure does. So because of my time, let me move to the next slide. Let me move to your next to the next slide here. Building resi resilience. That should be my yeah, building resilience and mental toughness. So uh, the thing is, if you want to actually, I'm not advising that because of I said, oh, there's a particular role that failure has to do, it has to play if you want to actually get um have mastery or you want to actually uh, exceed on your career and all of that. Doesn't mean that you should be like a desica or you should you put up a particular um um weak level of you know preparing for your examination it doesn't support that now the thing is if you want to actually attain success it's very necessary for you to build resilience and mental toughness which includes one developing a growth mindset two having positive self-talk and three self-management strategies you see when it comes to developing growth mindset uh, I, I i like to use myself as a case study when i finished my accounting technician scheme and AAT. I finished my AAT exam. Um, I qualified as an AAT in 2016. And, you know, I didn't write an exam for the next two years. Meanwhile, those that we qualified together, they were already qualifying. They were already, they were already SCAs and all of that. And, you know, my boss then, where, um, uh, where I currently work, came to me and was like, you have AAT. Why don't you go and write your ICANN examination? I said, I'm, I, I, sir, I'm scared. And part of the things I was talking about, funding you know failure could actually make you scared and all some other things right and you know i was actually looking do i want to do this next phase of life and all of that so he actually geared me he came to me he, 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 he spoke with me imagine your boss gearing you and telling you that oh i'll support you whatever you need along the way please go for it i'll support you and all of that then i registered for um it, it was a may diet 2018 it was a may diet I was meant to take the May diet and I got to the, I, I resumed the lectures because of how he has actually spoken to me. Um, I, I decided to go for it and I, I, I resumed lectures around um, late April, late March, early April. I remember maybe first week in April there about, and I was meant to write the exam in second week or third week of May. And I remember vividly my first class in uh, that particular class. I was so happy that I'm back. You know, I spoke with um, my tuition center um the head of the tuition center then he said oh you are welcome come back and all of that then my first class was financial reporting i'll never forget that particular class i used to can i hear you sir Well, I've lost the audio. Mr. David, we lost you. For okay, I think I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. Oh, okay. So while I was in that, while well, sorry, sorry for that. While I was in that class, you know, they were talking about um um several concepts it was a group accounting class they're talking about nci non-controlling interest they were talking about 
retain the earnings. They were talking about a whole lot of things. And, you know, it was all jargons to me because, it, you know, when you are you, you have a sister who, is, who happens to be in the senior class and probably just went to wait for her uh, before she's done so you guys can go home together. That was how it seemed like to me because, you know, it was all looking rubbish and all of that to me. I came out, I was so depressed. I was not happy with myself. I spoke with the man, the lecturer, then, and he told me something that, see, you need to have this at the back of your mind that you want to grow. And these are part of the things that you need to put in place if you want to grow. The reason why you're actually writing ICANN exam is because you want to grow. It's not because of you're actually writing because you want to write it, right? There are many people that, I, I tell many people that many people, your career depends on this, these three um, words, ACA. There are many people that if they can get that today, do you know how it's going to accelerate their career? You could hear what um, Shio said the other time that, you know, it's getting the ACA actually elevated his career and all of that. So it's you need to develop a growth mindset. You need to think ICANN. You see, you see, I see many people today, you say you are preparing for ICANN exam and a week to the exam, you are still attending parties. You are still, you are still um, going around. You know, there's, I used to tell people that there's a reason why this thing is called diet, right? Many people have not thought of it before that um, diet. When you hear the word diet, you need to diet your social life you need to diet the way you eat. You need to diet your sleep. You need to diet whatever can actually distract you. Your your certain people that are not contributing to ICANN examination. So depending that time that you're going to write your ICANN examination, you need to diet a whole lot of things. And that is the major reason why they call it diet, right? So I see so many people. I have a friend um, who is still writing the ICANN examination. And he was actually, you know, about two diets ago, he, he, he was actually, I registered him and he had just two weeks to the exam and he told me that he was going for a particular party or a wedding and all of that. And I was, I didn't want to condemn him because I don't like, I like people to do their thing. I don't like to condemn. And he came to me after the exam that oh, we failed. And I was thinking, you, you should know now that why wouldn't you fail? You, you see, you need to think I can. The moment you, you register that you want to write I can, you need to think I can your whole life should think i can when i was writing my ICANN examination when i'm at work i'm thinking of what i want to do what i want to read at times i snap my notes on my phone and you think i'm pressing my phone you think i'm pressing my system i'm actually reading something i might not need to jot i'm just you know i'm reading something i'm in the bus i'm reading something you need to think i can right i i can tell you for a fact i missed my sister's introduction i know several functions i missed i know several friends i cut off I know relationships that I actually lost while I was write, writing my ICANN exam. But today, to the glory of God, I, 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 I've gotten multiples of it. In fact, I've built worthy networks from qualifying as a chartered accountant. I know many people that are within my network today that I wouldn't have actually gotten if I didn't have that qualification. I know many rooms that have been allowed to enter. I know many, you know, it's, it's, it's a whole lot. That's why I said developing a growth mindset. It's not about writing the exam. You need to develop good mindset if you want to pass the exam. That's the first thing to actually develop. Then two, you know, positive self-talk. Now, this is another thing I want to talk about. While I met the man outside that day, he said something that, David, will you be able to write the diet? And I said, sir, I really think I will not be able to write the diet. Then I went back home. I was so depressed. I, I, I was challenged at the same time that, why? What happened? This is someone that I was so passionate about writing the ICANN examination. I got in that class, I could not contribute. I didn't even understand anything. Then I said to myself that, David, you can do this. Then I sat down. I said, okay, what are the things I need to do to pass this e examination? So I went back the following day, and it was meant to be a Sunday, Saturday, then Sunday. There was classes on Sunday. So I told my ICANN um, tutor owner that, sir, I'm taking the four papers. Then he looked at me. He was like, are you sure you want to do the four papers? You are writing in the exam is coming up coming up in about one month's time and you are telling me that you want to write the four papers i said sir i will do it i i spoke positively to myself that i was going to because of i'd actually giving myself that particular challenge right if you're in this class i'm not telling you that you should challenge yourself i'll still talk about this later on uh building you know smart goals you know because of i could actually say i'm going to write the four papers because i saw a feasible route that i could actually use i the following monday i went to work i told my boss that sir i'm applying for a three-week leave which he which he granted immediately because of it was the one that was actually um 
that was actually pushing me to write it. So those three weeks <laughs> were the, one of the busiest three weeks of my life, right? Building up to the examination. And, you know, the results came out. And I'm telling you, I, I, I actually referenced only management governance and ethics. There was a massive failure in PM that I had, and I passed. I had 56 in PM. The reason being that I it's not like I did something different. It's not like I I I know I I I I I'm going to talk about some other things I did that helped me. I was able to build network. The thing I noticed those were, that were contributing in the class. So I got really close to them. I met someone that was on scholarship in that class. His name is Joshua, and I fixed time with him. I was always chasing him with calls. That's it. You need to teach me group. We used to call him group encyclopedia then because he was so good in group accounts. Then another thing that helped me was strategizing well. So, you know, I was talking about possible positive um, self talk. Then, three, stress management. If you want to build mental toughness, stress management strategies are very important. See, the way you eat, the way you sleep, certain things that you do, you know, I used to, it, 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 can, it can be actually funny. I'm a lover of football. I love football so much, and many people know that. And um, one one thing I, I used to stay away from then was watching my football club play because of I'm very passionate about football and I can't take losses. So it gets to me how would my club lose, and I will not be able to read because it's going to affect me mentally. So these are things that could actually contribute to your. You need you know the things that can stress you. You know certain people, right? I I do some. That, there was a particular diet that my 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 exam fell on a day to my birthday right um okay my birthday fell on a day to my exam and i actually switched off my phone no one could actually reach out to me i just briefly in the morning i called my parents and my people that see i'm doing this i don't want people to wish me happy birthday because i'm actually on hot seat right now i want to read so you need you need to think i can many people you see saying oh when i ask people okay you feel you are tired of read you are tired of feeling what have you i try to hear from them what have you been doing how have you been preparing? Some some people will tell you, oh, I've been preparing. Eh, I used to I used to try my best. I used to, you know, and you know, you from what I could try to deduce, you see that people have been doing the same thing. If you keep doing the same thing, you will not be able to get different results. If you fail this diet, look at how you want to actually prepare for the following diet and do something different that will help you uh, move on. Then please, let's move to the next slide. Stress management is very important. How you sleep, manage your day and all of that things that could actually stress you please stay away from them it will not help you read it will not help you prepare well yeah I, I, me i don't used to watch football matches then no. <laughs> whenever i'm preparing for i can examination because every day counts right from day one of preparation down to when i'm done every day counts. please move to the next slide let's be fast i have two more slides to go either thank you so much okay Okay, effective study habits and time management. Effective study habits and time management. You see, this thing is very important. One of the most precious things to you when you're actually preparing for your ICANN exam is time management. You see, time management still boils down to doing productive things that prepares you for the exam. At times, you see many people, they are preparing for ICANN exam and they are still able to keep on. You know, they know what is happening with BBN. They know what is actually happening with... Um, with um latest movies in town their netflix on, you know and all of that they are able to like sorry um who is this okay thank you thank you so you see I, and i laugh some of these things used to make me laugh because you are not you are the thing is you have limited time and i'm going to talk about if you i've seen some questions someone said oh, if i'm writing five papers how do i prepare and all of that see let me bust your book if you are writing five papers you need to prepare on the average, on the average for 450 hours. You need to read for, I'm not just coming up with this because of, um, I'm not just giving a random figure. This is something that we have actually simulated. Um, some of the lecturers in my tuition center and, and high, we came up with, we draft, we, we actually calculated all of this that on the average, we are writing five papers. You need to have read for 450 hours to be sure that you are prepared for the ICANN examination. That is, if you can't, if it narrates down, that is three hours, at least three hours per day, at least three hours per day. And you're actually doing that three hours for four months, right? Four months. And the last month, you should not be reading again. You should be doing revision. Something is definitely wrong. If you are still holding ICAM pack, 
one week, one month to the exam. See, there are no uh, strategies to this. I'm just giving you the things that normally work, things that we've seen right from time, right? See, nobody is chasing you. It is a credit system. If you cannot write five papers, go for three. If you cannot write three papers, go for two. But the fact that you are going for three papers does not see guarantee that you can still pass those three papers if you are not doing the writing. The major thing is whether you are writing five papers, four papers, three papers, two papers, or one paper. There are certain people that write one paper for several times. So the fact that you are writing one paper does not change the strategy. The strategy should be preparing in the right way. And one of that is creating a study plan. See, break your study goals into weekly goals. I used to do something then, whenever I was done in class, I would look at the topics that we have for, uh, that we have treated and the topics that we have for the next week. So I do something, I used to um, look at how, whenever I come back from work, I group, I group I want to read. Before the week starts, I've drafted, oh, we, in this particular day, I want to read corporate reporting. On Tuesday, I want to read certain area. So I, and I have goals that, it's not just creating a study plan. You need to ask yourself, what have you been able to achieve? right at the end of that particular day ask yourself if i want to there was a if, if you okay for example you have treated cash flow statements during that particular uh, class for the weekend then on monday you say you want to read cash flow statements it's not just about reading cash flow statements what have you been able to understand pick up a paper i do that a lot when i was writing my account professional levels when i get to work i get to work i need to be the first person to get to work because i, I love to do this so i get to work as early as 6 6 30 at times and you know I, I just pick up a plain paper and I start to write everything I know on that cash flow statement, the direct method, how I'm going to get dividend, my financing activities, the adjustment I need to do on working capital and all of that. So I just, and at the end of the day, I pick up my, my notes, compare it with what I've done, then you'll be able to look at gaps you get. So those gaps are what you, that will make you understand that, oh, these are the things I've not, I've not on very well, so I need to work on them. And it will help you. So that's what it's not just creating a study time. Build that timetable is very important. And you know, build, having a study plan is very important because of while you are doing your revision, it will help you fall back to certain things that you you know. While I was actually writing my, if you open my my um, tutorial handbook, then um, my tuition center handbook, then there are some particular places that I will write must revise. On and I will sign it. I will write the date I wrote it there on those particular topics. The reason why I used to write that, or at times I would say more study. There are times that I will even say more read. I wish I could actually. Some of my friends used to laugh. Then I will just say more read. There are some that I will say more read a day to the exam, must revise a day to the exam, because of I know that I know it too. It's not like I do not know it, but I still need to do something. There are some gaps, right? So that's the major reason. And on my timetable, I will write it there. Do this, do that. So time management technique is not important for before you enter the example. Also in the example, you know you have 60 minutes, uh, sorry, you have you have about three hours, 15 minutes. Now, you should be able to break this down. There are certain hours, uh, minutes that you should not spend on a question. You need to be able to manage your time very well, right? So time management techniques, that's also there. Then active learning techniques. By coincidence, I've actually explained this. Active learning techniques, which means, you know, trying to see if you can still recollect some of the things you, you have actually read. At times, I'm in the bus and people are arguing and all of that. Then, and you know, I'm not arguing with them. What me I'm thinking of is, can I still remember that particular, um, how to regear, how to get the proxy better, how to get the equity better? Can I still remember what I've done there? Can I still remember some, some particular things when it comes to racial analysis? Can I still remember, you know, I'm thinking of, oh, if I see that I cannot remember, I'll quickly go back to it. Right, so that is active learning technique. When you are in the class, participate in group discussion. It's very important. You see, the, there was a particular diet. I don't know, maybe while I was in the skills level, there was a particular diet uh, for I think financial reporting. I did not really study that stuff, and um, it was just a group discussion. I'm forgetting that particular topic, and it was just a group group discussion. I read it quite all right. Now the thing is, many people mistake icon. You read the same way you read for your school exams, right? That's the major reason why you think um, the same thing that you are doing for your school academic exam is the same thing you do for professional exam. Professional exams are very different. The reason why I say they are very different, some of us, the things that you actually take one, um, four semesters to do, if while we're in school, then we did management accounting um, over two semesters. But this management accounting, you are doing management accounting, cost accounting, you are doing a whole lot of things grouped together inside PM in six months. 
and you want to read the same way you are reading for that school exam and you are telling me that you, you want to pass i'm not wishing you failure but you need the, the way you, you don't need to cram for i can exam i can ex i've been able to by god's grace um very soon i, I want to convert into marking i can exams uh, i want to have that experience for myself so i would actually quit lecturing because it is very compulsory to do that you cannot lecture while you actually mark i can examination so i would actually but i've been able to speak with several examiners and one of the major things that they look out for is your competency right what do you have an idea of these things you are talking about it's very funny right i had a friend then in my professional level days and i wish i met him earlier at the skills level when we were reading then we used to interpret it to our local dialect i'm a yoruba boy whenever we we're reading then we'll be saying it in our local dialect we would try to interpret it in our local dialect to actually make us understand it more right we just wanted to understand it not cram it that is the major reason why you wake me up today or you wake me up anytime um i would actually tell you some things i'll actually tell you some things today because of it's not like i crammed it it is there right so you need to look at how you consider some of these active learning techniques because of my time i'll move to the next let's move to the next we're actually getting there gradually okay thank you by coincidence i've actually spoken about this seeking support and guidance see it's very important leveraging study group i spoke about leveraging study group one thing happened while i was in professional level um, I, I said I referenced strategic financial management and ethics. I wrote five papers at the professional level. You know, I was bringing down Mura from skills level. That, oh, I wrote four, four papers, and even the one I referenced, I had 46, right? So it was a ginger for me, and I was coming and all of that. So when I got to the um, when I got to the professional level, I was already taking students strategic financial management. I was already lecturing by then. I was lecturing strategic financial management, even in my class then. Lecturer come to class. Many people they don't understand certain areas. I'll come to them. I'll explain because I had this natural um, till today. I still have that passion for finance. Anything finance. In fact, if I'm feeling drowsy in class, maybe you know we should have lengthy hours in class. Then maybe from seven to like six. So whenever the finance um, strategic financial management lecturer enters the class, my eyes immediately open and I'm really geared. So when I wrote my first, I was so complacent. You know, I I, I understood SFM very well. And I scored nine. In fact, I used to say something that if you are going to fail an exam, I can exam. You will know before you leave the exam hall. You will know. Let me tell you how you will know. <laughs> By the time you sit down and you are looking at what you have done, nobody will tell you that what you have done is not. Is it that particular exam? I can never forget. Many people were submitting the exam. They were submitting their scripts. In fact, they were they were leaving the exam hall about one hour. I've never experienced that in my kind of examination. Um, while I was writing my kind of examination, they were left SFM um exam or about one hour to the exam they, they were submitting they're telling the examiner they cannot they were signing out and submitting right and i was i started crying right from inside the examination hall it's not like i did not understand what at times you get to the exam or it's not like you do not understand the question but something is happening that you cannot you know picture all of put those things together and all of that articulate some of these things that you know right it was the, the tested um um um, free cash flow, measures and acquisition. These are the things that I've been explaining and I've been teaching students. But one way or the other, I could not just, you know, it was the last diet that um, um, working capital management was going to be tested because of the new syllabus was going to be tested at the uh, professional level. It was taken down to PM um, the following diet. So the, I knew it was going to come out. So I'd actually prepared and they actually they brought that working capital uh, question and I could not even do anything. I don't even know what happened. You get i could not do everything i was i was just writing jargons making so much mistakes and i tell you for a fact that immediately i left that particular in, in fact the so following day when we're done with the examination i went to buy a omole and waters book sfm omole and waters book because of i knew in fact before the results came out i was halfway done with sfm so when the results came out and i scored nine i just said well i knew. i just continued and i finished the syllabus sfm syllabus august while the examination was in uh, november i finished in august and i was going to the tutorial center and i was still taking people i was teaching people but this time i was already ready for it in fact i did not want to register any other course with sfm because i referenced advanced taxation and case study with sfm after writing five papers so i did not want to register i was i was angry that why would i reference sfm so i wanted to just go and write only sfm 
So someone came to me while we we're having that I said always leverage on study groups. So in that particular um, night class, we we're just talking and we we're advising ourselves that okay, don't write this paper. Right? So I felt okay, let me add case study to it. And at the moment when I was going to when I was going to register for my examination, a friend just called me that guy, why don't you just register advanced with it? We've seen this thing before now, and we don't know anything that can happen. I know. So that diet, I I wrote the three papers and glory be to god i actually qualified that diet. so i was just thanking him and you would not believe that it's actually showed you my results that's why i said the way you prepare will show you your results i had the highest score i had about 70 something or 80 something sfm and the both case study and advanced taxation had 50 each so you could actually see that i was not ready for those two courses that diet. but i was just pushing and pushing and all of that just to say okay let me see what i can do so that's why it's very important study groups and that particular diet although that group is no longer in existence i could not keep up with my timing and all that i created a telegram platform and where i was pulling different people together to to actually solve questions and we did something we we, we made we, we we did something then we were we were actually um solving at least two questions a day that was what we concluded at that time that we we'll solve two questions a day on sfm so today, one, someone will bring questions, the other person will bring another question. We have a conference call, we discuss and all of that within two hours and we are done, right? You will not believe that the question that we solved, that particular diet, it was an ACC question. In fact, that um, SFM that I referenced that diet actually made me, I have till now, I still have a question bank. I have a question bank of about 100 questions that comprises, that goes from different topics, cost of capital, different topics of the syllabus. At least more than 10 10 questions each so till now i still have that question bank book question and answer so that particular question that we are treated in that study group came out live i'm not joking i kid you not it came out live question number one 30 marks in the example live question they did not edit any figure i'm telling you they did not edit any figure at all the only thing that i can change was the name it was an acca question and they did not change anything just the name that they used that they changed and while I was inside the exam hall, my friend, Bolo, I cannot forget, he just reached out to me. He just signaled to me and I was laughing because we had actually solved that question. So can you see what leveraging study group actually does? And also too, tutoring and mentoring. That's what we are doing here today. Tutoring and mentoring. See, when someone comes to you, that please let me solve this thing. Even if you don't know it, collect it, go and research on it. Tell him that, okay, I would, I would check it and we'll come back, we'll solve it together. Don't say you don't know it. It's very important because of there was one particular diet, um, corporate reporting, that someone brought a, a question to me on um, five-step model. It was a case study question, kind of. And it was like maybe a week to the exam. It was a bit technical. And I just said, okay, let me check it. Let me check it. And, you know, we did it. I, I didn't really get it. Then later, I came with the solution. And we both read it and all of that. Um, so when we got into the exam, example, I can't test it, something very similar to it. And I was laughing that, oh, look at what this person brought to me and i was thanking the person for 20 marks and i was thanking the person that look at what you brought so tutoring teach people whatever you know see whatever you know teach it so that you don't forget it that's one way to learn also once you teach what you know is very important then mentoring also um gets to um uh, uh, get advice from people that have actually done it before and that is what she is actually doing and I'm, I'm actually congratulating you for being in this particular webinar today because it's very important and you are going to actually gain uh, from this. And three, utilizing relevant resources. It's very important for me to state this, that do not overwhelm yourself with resources when you are preparing for exam. Many of us have fallen victim of this. When you overwhelm yourself with resources, you will have this, you will not be able to focus. You will not be able to place your focus because of the way uh, this material will treat this with different, if just that's part of the things when you're developing how you are going to read, it's very important, target the material that you want to use. There are some particular courses that using the icon material is very important. In fact, if you use the icon material, you gain everything that you need from it. And there are some that you need to get additional materials for, right? I watched a whole lot of Frankie Con videos. I don't know many of us are familiar with Frankie Con then on YouTube. I was watching a whole lot of, and I was using a whole lot of uh, materials. But later I noticed that since these materials are overwhelming me, so I focused, I narrowed it down to just one or two. So don't overwhelm yourself. Get utilize relevant resources that will be relevant for you. 
you don't have to sit down and be writing even while you are walking i listen to i put here please my ear you right and i'm listening to video lectures while i'm going on the streets right while i'm inside i'm trying, and uh, i'm actually um moving from one place to the other so it's very important think i can so let's move to the last one here the last one before we entertain questions thank you so much Anita. you made this really seamless for me last one okay overcoming self-doubt okay overcoming self-doubt and maintaining motivation now uh, when it comes to self-doubt doubt i've always been there i've been there before and um um I've been, I've been there you know i used to doubt myself a lot that oh can i do this can i press for in fact this thing happened to me even with the way i've actually covered the syllabus for sfm at the final level my final exam while i was about entering the exam or something just dropped in my mind ah, what if you reference this course again ha! and i was like geez when i was i just sat down and the thing i don't know what brought it that what if you reference say i'm telling you for a fact many people will laugh there's something called ab association of village people you think it is not real right right you think it is not real this is i actually believe that it is real it's as much as it can be funny in my corporate reporting examination when i passed corporate reporting i actually use one particular calculator that I've, I've developed so much learning curve on and i advise you please do not take calculator that you've not developed learning curve on into the exam hall it's very important or write things that anything you want to take into the exam or ensure you've been using it for a while so that it will help you there's no time it will help you move faster in the exam hall so um when i was inside that examination and i got they've told us in our account tutorial center that this gets to uh we are going to the examination or two docket or two pencil to virus or to everything or two of it so when i got into the exam hall, my calculator that i used to solve questions overnight and all of that just began malfunctioning and it stopped working and the fact that i even forgot that i was with another calculator was what even got me the most and i was really disgruntled i was so 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 disorganized then i reached out to the examiner i just raised my hand and the examiner was telling me what's happening why are you raising your hand then i complained to him that ah my calculator is no longer working and all of that and he lifted i just lifted my docket and I, oh, i'm even with another calculator i had forgotten exam stress and you know tension so i used that calculator and you wouldn't believe that while when i was actually sharing the whole stuff with my friends after the exam Okay, trying to test the calculator, I started walking back. Then I was just thinking that what was really happening. This same calculator started walking back. I'm telling you, it's not, it's not, I'm not joking here. Right. So there I've, I've seen a whole lot of this. When I passed my case study examination, my case study, you know, and that's what I used to advise also. If you are going into the example, maybe most especially for reference students, it's very important that most especially those that your reference course is not in day one or day two. Please, if you are going in day three, ensure you ask vital questions from those that went in day one, day two. The institute is one institute that does not joke with integrity and accuracy, right? It's very important. When you are going into the exam and you have reference, ask people, please, the instructions that they passed last diet, what have they passed this diet that is different from it? So I assumed that the instructions were still the same. And I went uh, to write my case study exam. I didn't go in. I didn't go. I, okay, I went in the one i wrote advanced tax but I, I was not there when they were passing instructions for the first paper so i didn't know that they said case study answer booklet is no longer a plain uh answer normal answer booklet you have a uh, case study written boldly on it so while i entered the exam the examiner just shared case study, um answer booklets to me and you know i was already doing i'd already worked for about two hours or two and a half hours then while you know you'll be signing attendance um maybe signing and sign out and all of that so when the man brought the stuff for me to sign, um, he just noticed that my answer booklet was not having case study written on it. Then he was like, what's happening? Why are you not having a uh, case study boldly written on your answer booklet? I said, this was the answer booklet that was given to me. Then he said, uh, no, it should not be so. It should never be so. And one thing that helped me that day was when I entered the examination hall, I always like to get to the examination to locate my seat early enough. I met this man at the entrance. I didn't even know who he was. I just greeted him like normally and all of that and he recognized me that ah you know the one that greeted me at the door and he was like ah what happened then he said he just took the mic he went to the stage and he took the mic i wrote my exam at jogo center many of us that are in the battle you know jogo center and then he took the mic from me uh, he took the mic then he said hello please if you know that 
check your case study answer booklet now. You must have case study boldly written on it. Um, boldly written on it. Then I said, then the man said, if you are not having case study boldly written on it, please raise your hand. And you will not believe that about 15 to 20 people in the example did had similar issue. Then the man came and said, see, <clears throat> this is a big issue. I had already done my um, financial statement analysis. And, you know, the appendix, I've done my common size, I've done all my trends and all of that. I was already doing my financial data analysis before moving straight to, you know, the other aspects. Then the man just said, you know what, take the new answer booklet and don't write anything. Just continue from, leave the space and continue from where you are, uh, where you have actually gotten from your old answer booklet. When the exam is done, you know, we'll give you time to to rewrite whatever you have written in your old answer booklet into the new answer booklet. And that's, I was really happy because, you know, if it were not to be an examiner that was actually lenient enough to actually do that, it would have been an automatically coming back, which would have costed me. Do you get? So that's what I'm trying to say that, you know, when you are going to the exam, that was just like a something, I was talking about something that I diverted. So talking about self-doubt and maintaining motivation, it's very important to set realistic goals because it will not be, you'll not be easily motivated if you are not setting goals that you can easily attain. Many of us have heard of smart goals, um, sustainable, measurable. Um, uh, what's, what's the other one? Sus uh, sustainable, measurable, um, I've forgotten that AR, then realistic, then time bound. Achievable. Achievable. achievable, exactly. Exactly. Thank you so much. Achievable. So it's very important. Imagine you are, you, you, you are drawing out your study plan now, and on the first day, you said, I want to cover, maybe you are in the skills level, and you said, for PISA, I want to cover, cover um, um, I want to cover fiscal responsibility, I want to cover public finance. How is it possible for you to cover those two things in the same day? You know, public finance is one of those of you writing PISA, please do not joke with public finance. There are some core areas, and I'm still going to talk about it. There are some core areas that I believe someone asks the question that if you want to, if you want to write, um, yes, does I can use area of competence? Yes, I can does. I can use this area of competence area of competence i can't use it a lot see area of competence is not is not actually boldly written in the syllabus if you like go to the syllabus go and look for it from today to tomorrow you not sit there now this is what some lecturers and i have actually used to determine that's our metric right we will not be liable to any any um uh, anything that you suffer any loss that you suffer if you base your own uh assumption or maybe a building reliance on whatever we are using because of we are i'm giving a disclaimer here because i i always like to do that i'm a professional so i will not be held liable for whatever i've said so it's very important i will share my story with you in 2021 this thing actually happened i told the student that oh um you know i can was actually used to to doing this thing if they test interest rates risk management under strategic financial management the following diet will test currency risk management then i was always telling students, see these diets they've tested interest rates risk management they will not test it they will test currency risk and we're so you know they've done that for like three four diets so many of us were very that's what will happen then all the things i predicted for other courses came out only for us to only for the students to enter sfm examination or and um the, the ICANN did not test either of the two, whether currency risk or interest rate risk management. Then I was running from pillar to post. The students were actually banking. And whenever they tested, they would test it for either 15 marks or 20 marks. So it's never saying, ah, Mr. David, what you do does not come out. And you know, I could not, I did not know what to do. So I'm not an ICANN examiner. I don't know. I don't sort set questions. But you know, we follow trends, right? We follow trends. And what the lecturers and I have been able to come up with. To actually determine those areas of competence is using a particular metric. That metric is if I can does not go to diets without testing a particular topic, then that they are trying to tell us that that topic is an area of competence. I'll come again. If you check the pathfinder or you check questions that I can is testing, and I can go a particular um, a particular diet. They do not test uh, that particular diet. Then the following, they did not test that topic. Then the following diet, they not test that topic. Then it's telling you that that particular topic is the area of uh, concentration. If they do not go to diet, they cannot go to diet without testing. If they do, that means that they've not tested this diet, they will test the following diet. That is what we're actually using to build our area of competence. So, for example, now if you open, if you check 
um, SFM, for example, you notice that major and acquisition, if they don't test this diet, the following diet is coming. What is it trying to tell you? If you check um, corporate reporting, they will, they will test something on complex group. You cannot escape complex group, right? If they don't test joint um, subsidiary, they will test um, piecemeal acquisition. If they don't test piecemeal acquisition, they will test um, uh, maybe sub sub or direct holding in sub sub. So that means that they are trying to tell you that you must prepare yourself extensively in these areas, right? Check public sector accounting and finance. They will, if they don't test public finance, which encompasses public debt, um, different areas of public finance, in this diet, they will test the following diet. If you check PM, if they don't test relevant costs in this diet, they will test the following diet. So he's trying to tell you that these areas are area of competency. And many of us following me on LinkedIn have actually um, spoken about this before. So it's actually very extensive. And I, I, I actually went from foundation down to, it's not my it's not my work. I'm not the only one that did it. We did it together in collaboration with some lecturers. Some of them have 15 years, 20 years experience lecturing ICANN. So what we have actually done, uh, that was what's the product of, uh, or the result of what we did. So setting realistic goals is very important so that you can be able to cover them, right? So secondly, celebrating small wins. This is very important. I've seen many people, um, your results will come out and maybe you wrote four papers, you passed three, you failed uh, one, and you are still moody, you are feeling somehow. It's not a win for you. Those three that you have passed, they've gone. They've, they've passed it once and you have passed it for life. No one can ask you to write it again. So celebrate those small wins. That's why whenever I see people celebrating, oh, they passed one paper, they passed two papers, I, I will not commit because of it's actually a mindset to actually take forward but we are taking in fact my first class this diet my first class the, it was so so i didn't really like my first class you know it's been so for how many diets now i've been lecturing for 10 diets now that's like five years and whenever the result comes out the first class is usually is usually somehow because many students have not gotten over the results they still bring up this kind of moody look they are still you know they are not very geared and all of that so and some of them are very geared because and they are always very complacent which is not too good you see many people because of the past five paper four papers five papers and excuse them when they get to the professional level their first class they are usually the oh they know it all and all of that you need to pipe down i can can humble you you need to really pipe down i can can humble you at any time i've seen students on scholarships scoring ridiculous marks right you don't need to be very complacent do you get so while you are celebrating your wins do not be complacent it should be um, a motivation for you to sit up then thirdly visualization and positive affirmation i've spoken about this before i just wanted to stress this because it's very important for you to you know uh, keep yourself motivated you see visualize visualizing where you are going to is very important for someone like me now i knew i needed the icon uh, qualification for where i'm going to i had i knew what i was visualizing i knew what i wanted to do i knew what lied in front of me so that was the major you know visualizing it actually made me kept me on the route so even while i actually failed i chest it if you see me fail i will chest it and come back so that's why that's what was one of the things that were actually pushing me to to give my all in writing i can examination and you know to god be glory i actually did that even though um i didn't enjoy my i used to tell people to now no matter i always say it i didn't enjoy my induction ceremony because my induction was in may um 2020 when covid19 uh, visualizing of the induction day you know how you can actually you know snap pictures and all of that were one of the things that were pushing us then you get and you know <laughs> On the induction day, I was somewhere in the corner of my house just celebrating myself. It was not really nice to me. But don't worry, your own will not be <laughs> virtual induction. So it could be part of the things that could gear you up and charge you up for the examination. So I, I think at this stage, um, and positive affirmation. When you are trying to get scared in the examination or please speak to yourself, talk to yourself, say you can do it. That's why they call it I can, I can do it. I would not come back for this examination. I have, let me just share this thing with us. There's this boss of mine that um, she she was actually deployed to my office in 20, 2019, thereabouts. And um, when she got there, 
um, in my office, there's a public setting and, you know, both, this is not a true one, I can, or maybe this is not a comparison between I can or Anan and, and, and things like that. You know, in public sector, both federal and state level, Anan and I can, they are at par. So whether you have I can, whether you have Anan, you always start from the same level, right? You are seeing that you are at par, but I don't know, maybe mentally and all of that, you might not be at par. So she came, she was an Anan, um, she's an Anan um, member, and she came, she didn't really know much about me. She, I was just, she, people introduced that to me and all of that, one of the most resourceful people in the office and all of that. So I was having issues with her. Then later she got to know that I was an ICANN uh, student. Then, I'm uh, sorry, I was an ICANN member. I was already qualified then, but I had not, maybe I, maybe I had not inducted then. I was already qualified. Then she, um, she then started having issues and all of that. But later we got close, started working extensively then. She told me that she wanted to resume writing because she stopped writing I can when she far back as 2002 or 2003 because of she felt oh it was actually hard and since I can and Anand were at par in the civil service public service so let her just go and take the easier one and you know then she said she always had it in mind that she was going to uh, write the exam later on in life then seeing me having I can qualification she was actually motivated that okay let her write it and she knew that I was actually lecturing. So she said, let her utilize the fact that she had an ICANN lecturer in, in her, as, a, as, a, as a subordinate. So I was actually pushing her and pushing her. The first ICANN exam that she wrote, she got exemption to the professional level. The first ICANN exam that she wrote, I was laughing because of the way she was preparing. She thought it was Anna. She filled all the papers that she wrote. Then she came to me, she said, oh, what's up? I said, ma, the way you are preparing for this exam, that's not how to prepare. Hmm. That's not how to prepare. There's a reason why this thing is called diet. There's a reason why it is called diet. There are a whole lot of things that you need to do. Then I was telling her and all of that. You see, then I noticed the way she started preparing. The diet, she, she decided to prepare well. Then that she was going to like focus and all of that. She passed one out of three papers that she was writing. Then I said, good. No, she passed two. Out of the three papers that she was writing, she, had, she uh, needed just one more left, which was SFM. Then I told her that, Ma, the way you are going to prepare for this one, don't say because of you're actually writing one paper, you're not prepared in a very lackadaisical way or, you know, in a complacent way. You need to prepare well. What I want to bring out from this is the word of positive affirmation. Then she told me when she was going, the morning that she was going to write her SFM examination, even though I was pushing her, getting her up, she got... I don't want. I did not want to teach her because I felt um, there would be like a self-interest. I might not be self. Um, I don't know. There was conflicting kind of thing. Boss, not want to teach her and all that. There are certain places that I need to like put down on the spot. Whenever I'm lecturing, I like to put students on the spot or you know charge them up. I will not be able to do it because she's my boss. So I, I just said it's better for her to actually you know, know get a tutorial. Uh, a tutor would actually do that. That man used to come to work. Then I will stay while he's teaching. You know trying to like assist her and all of that i would be then she wrote a, um november diet last year this one is is going to be 50 this year um and you know she was actually having so much to do she's she's the boss she's the hod of the department right and you know having so many meetings and all of that from our general from different places and all it gets can be overwhelming but i was actually helping her believing her in certain areas that I could actually, she would actually delegate to me. I was leaving her even while she was on leave. There, I had bosses in front of me, but she felt really comfortable delegating some of those tasks to me, right? And, you know, on the morning that she was going to write her exam, she spoke with me. She said, this is her last ICANN exam that she was going to write. And I said, yes, I believe it with her, that she's going to write, this is her last ICANN exam. So when the results came out, I, read, I, I used to check her result and everything. I wasn't at work that day. Then I just checked her result and, you know, my auditor was her, my internal auditor was around there. She's an ICANN member. And I just walked up to my internal auditor. She didn't know what was happening. She was actually working on her seat. And I just walked up to my internal auditor and I told her that my boss has qualified her. That was not like we should prank her. Do you get that we should try? I said, ah, don't prank with ICANN exam. Please, I will never prank anybody with the results. I will never. I remember my final examination results when I was checking the wrong. Um, I was checking the wrong. I used the wrong examination number to check. And it didn't bring anything while I was searching. I almost fainted. Please, that's even a young person. Please, don't let us prank. Then I told her that. Immediately, I just told her that she passed. If you see the 
wish celebrated. So positive affirmation and working towards it. You know what you want. I don't know. Many of us have the reason why we are writing the exam. I don't know. Maybe you want to use it to kill a particular work. Many of us, you see, in fact, most of the works out there now, you see um, ACA preferred or students in the final level of the ICANN ICAN examination and all of that. So you can submit that CV with so much confidence, right? So that is the major reason why you need to know what you want. Visualize what you want and aim towards it. Don't say, oh, I want to be chattered and all of that, but you are doing the opposite. It's not good. Walk towards it. Think I can. That's it. Think I can. Let's the way. In fact, when people see you, let them know that you are writing I can exam. Some people will ask you, my my um, neighbor then, where I was staying, there was a particular day that she, when she was taking her child to to school in the morning around as early as six six thirty. Then she saw me. There's a particular corner I used to go read. Then there's a fruit tree there. She saw me reading there as early as six six thirty. When she was coming back in the evening, she saw me sitting down there. She was saying, ah, ah, you are yes this morning and all of that. Let people know, right? Let people know that. So I, you, you see, when you are writing I can exam, it's not about just writing it. It is right, doing it well. You need to think I can. I cannot overemphasize this. Think I can. Let everything within you know that you are writing the exam. And trust me, you don't attain the same results. I'm telling you, you don't attain the same results. So thank you so much. Um, I would entertain question at this stage. Uh, I just really try to manage. I, I, if you leave me, I will talk. I will talk for like six hours. I cannot stop talking. If you leave me for six hours, I'll keep on talking. But so, so let's just Thank clean that. So let me... Yes. <laughs> I will drop the message for your WhatsApp, but I saw that you were uh, you were so passionate about it. I was really engrossed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay so we'll be taking questions and the way we want it to go if you have any question because i feel mr david has already attended to all the questions we received via whatsapp from the community right and i've dropped the community link i'll also be dropping mr david's linkedin profile and whatsapp profile in the chat i said whatsapp sorry his linkedin profile and Sean daniel's linkedin profile in the chat room so if you have any question for people that would like to talk you can just use the raising of hand function or don't you have any questions for him so thank you thank you so much mr david like okay let me just okay. like give okay i'm seeing some okay they are still on the call so let me see the queue please each each um eh? wow ah one minute and i will take the one minute strictly please one minute per person because we've already overshoot our time by this time should have been rounding up or yeah but really really appreciate mr david please i'm timing everybody one minute so gani you you can have the floor kindly unmute yourself one minute please is this still on the call if gani is not on the call bukola can unmute her mic so that we just quickly wrap this up hello good evening uh this call okay good evening Yes, we can hear you. Question, is there any online class? Is there any online class? Okay. Um, so online Mr. Class, David. Online class. Yes, yes, I heard that. Mr. David, do you have like online classes that you take? Because okay, thank you. Baka is just for accountability where we have community, you join the app, they track your reading and all. We don't do classes, right? So I don't know if Mr. David has okay. any online class he can recommend for the house. Okay, currently I lecture with Starry Good Academy and um, Starry Good Academy offers online uh, classes. Um, we offer video lectures. Then those video lectures have been backed by the online classes every week where we get to discuss many of the things that we have actually um spoken about in the video lecture so we rub minds whatever you don't understand you so for the week we issue out topics for the week that you read then you come after that we can talk about some things and after you watch the videos video lectures so you just reach out okay, to me so, to, so uh, i'll be dropping mr david and we also have online um, i can online to us too okay yeah yeah they have a youtube page too Okay. Is there any other question? Mm 
We okay. taking the question, the next question. question. Yeah, uh, yes, yes, sorry. I'm trying to get that. Yeah. So the next person, Bukola, you can just drop your hand. Then Richie One Plus, I don't know which. Richie One Plus, can you unmute yourself? Please, I'd like us to wrap this up on time. Okay, if Richie is not around, Bam Dele Dam Lola John, please take the floor. Um, I don't think so. Tai Musa, are you on the call? Yes, I'm on the call. Good evening. Yes, please take the, take the floor. Thank okay, you. thank you so much, Mr. Thank David. You, Mr. David, and thank you for, for the lecture so far. On a quick one, the first thing I will ask is I don't know if you can just guide me. Hello? On. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Sorry, he's always speaking. Um, I think this he, is Amla, he, this is Sorry, sorry, Mr. Yeah. David. Tyro was trying to speak. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Tyro, sorry, please hold on. I called Dami earlier. Okay, you can All take right. the floor. Yeah. Right. Okay, Dami, you can, can go on. Yes, please. Okay, thank you. So my first question is, I don't know if you can actually guide us on the examination orientation because i can say this is one of the things that affected me my first diet basically on right start a new question in a fresh page because should i say i did not even know the meaning i was just writing everything everything not until um one of the lecturer now had to cl clarify it like so I would like you to give us more orientation on exam orientation. And that's the first thing. The second thing is, I don't know if you can, you can give room for each location, if you can just uh, connect together, like basically now I am in Port Harcourt. My own limiting factor is just to go to class. And maybe if we in Port Harcourt can just know each other and be friend and start group reading. Thank you. Okay. I'll, I'll leave the second one to Inda. I think that's one of the things that the community is trying to put together. I don't know. And um, for the first one, the exam, you know, this thing is, that's part of the things that we used to do uh, in my tutorial center before you go into the exam. Well, there are some things that we need to guide you on that you need to know going into the exam hall. And the reason, and we used to give this disclaimer that please, irrespective of whatever we tell you, we are talking based on the existing rules and existing um, guidelines that were there, the previous diets, they can change. The Institute is actually striving towards um, integrity and accuracy. So they are looking at more ways that they could actually get things done, right? So. That's the major reason why we always tell students that pay attention to instructions that the examiner gives at the beginning of the examination, right? It's very, very important. Pay attention. Always pay. that moment when they bring the mic and say, okay, you are welcome to May 2020 or May, November 2024 diet. Please pay attention to whatever they are saying there because it's very important for your success in that diet. Then we have also have some basic examination tips, readiness and all of that. Um, dealing with stress, proud, going to the examination. See, ex preparing for the examination is not at that time to be spending one, eight hours, you know, reading overnight and all of that. It could actually stress you and all of that. I've been there. I've been there before. I thought I was going to actually beat it, taking caffeine, you know, drinking a whole lot of substances that, that can actually keep me woke and all of that. And getting to the exam or some of the things I read for corporate reporting, I was maybe in transition. Some of the things I read in transition, I was maybe in SFM and all of that. It was not really, the vision was not really that uh, clear. Do you get? So they are basic, this and that whole webinar on its own, basic examination readiness. In my tuition house, we normally do that. You know, there was a particular diet, I remember vividly that a student just immediately she was done writing the first paper. She said, let her go and relax and rest for the second paper. So she went under a particular gallery or like a bridge. Many of you that have written exam in the background at Jogo Center, you know that particular place behind the Hall of Grace. So she went to reach there. Then she didn't tell anyone that she was going to reach there. Then she just sat there and she was reading. And someone that had read overnight, she just dozed off and she slept off. 
Then when she woke up, it was even the car that I was trying to drive out of the garage that woke up, woke her up. Then she said, oh, God, my exam. She got into the exam hall, and she was already on to four to five or thereabouts. It was already more than one hour. You know, exam rule that if it's more than one hour, you cannot be allowed to take the exam. So that was how, you know, the exam that they were currently writing that she paid for turned into past question for her. So you see, these are part of the things we discuss during that basic examination preparation uh, days and all of that. So it's very important for you to pay attention to it. But the major thing that you should not joke with is those instructions that they are going to pass, the examiners are going to pass on the day of the exam. So I hope I've been able to like, and you know, for that answer booklet, you know, thing and all of that, it's very important just for you, for your work to be, uh, to be, to do needs and all of that. It's very important for you to start your, your, a question on a fresh sheet. It is very, very important. I can overemphasize this. Start your work on a fresh sheet. It's very important. And these are part of the things I used to tell students during the uh, basic examination preparation week that please also ensure that um, don't, don't start with the question you do not know. See, many examiners have complained that, um, you know, when they open the exam uh, student script, they will see that they are leaving a blank space. As an examiner, if I open your script and I see a blank space, what are you telling me? You're actually giving me a wrong motive. And you know, the perception that you give me, examiners are human and they think also like human. The fact that they are they are actually professionals, they are also human. So whatever they think, the way they perceive you to be, right? Imagine the first place that they open, they notice, they notice that if you have actually answered your question correctly. In fact, some places that they might not even read your work finished before they say, hmm, it's making sense, they give it to him, do you get? But imagine the examiner opens your scripts and he sees that ah, uh, you have a blank space, although you know B, but because of you don't know one A, you just left the space there, and you know B, you know C, you know D, right? It's not a good way to actually start the exam. Start with the one that you know firstly, right? And you, there are a whole lot of ex basic examination tips and you know uh, things that could actually give. So it's very important. Yeah, someone said something the other time that, the thing is, you can start one, it depends on, if the whole thing is making your work needs. If you have one A, all right, and one A has taken a whole page, starts one B on the phone. When I mean page, you know, a page is having two leaflets. Is uh, Sorry, not, a leaflet is having two pages, right? So when you pick up a leaflet, you have one page on the right, one page at the back also when you flip over. So you can just move one A from one A, maybe you use this down and you're almost done with that one A. Just start one B on the next page. But if you see that there's still enough space, start one B on that same page, right? But if you want to start two, right, leave that, even if you have not used the O um, leaflet finish on one, one for number one, move to the next leaflet. Don't use the same leaflet for, um, for one, for one, right? Do you get what I'm trying to say? So it's very, it might not be anything, it might just be just to make your work neat. All of these things are part of the things that make your, you know, your work presentable and the examiner very lenient in marking with marking your scripts and all of that. Do you get? So let me entertain more question for that. I hope I've been able to answer your question. Um, yeah. Let me see. So thank you. So regarding the second question for Potter Court, finding a reading partner, that's why Baka is here for you. I already dropped the link to the community so you can find people that are writing the same level, the same papers, and you get to network and plan. Because now you don't really need to even meet somebody physically before you can have a study group that Mr. David mentioned earlier. It can just be like a WhatsApp group where you have an accountability partner that keeps checking on you and you to also keep checking on the person. So you can just scroll through the chat room and um, you see the link to the community there. So Taiwo, you can take, I think for the purpose of time, please, uh, from after Taiwo, the rest, please, can you just quickly type your message, your question while Taiwo is speaking, because we've already, the time is already fast spent, actually. Um, Taiwo, please take your question. Akiemi and the rest, please use the chat room while I read the questions to Mr. David because of time, because I really like us to wrap up by nine. Thank you. Exactly. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Oinda. Thank you, Mr. David. Thank you so much. Okay, so my question is this. Creating a study plan. I have my study plan and it um, revolves around just I can study pack and um, some YouTube videos. I've attended lectures before. I'm writing PM again. I have only PM left for skills. So I want to ask because okay. I wrote 
diet. And then um, immediately I got out from the exam or like um, some people that were just working on the road together with, they were like, ah, that question came out. That question was a question they had solved from, um, uh, is it Ade Omoleiwa Spark? Omoleiwa, Omoleiwa. So I, 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 uh, the story I attended, I, I had spoken with the PM lecturer uh, at the time that I wanted to get at the Omole in Was Park. And he was like, no, what do you need it for? This and that. Just focus on your I can't study park and the past questions and all and you're good to go. So, you know, while coming out from the exam and I heard people talking about that, that question, you know, I felt really pain. Like maybe if I had gotten this this um, man's test book, maybe I would have yeah. cited this question, maybe or maybe not. You understand mm -hmm. so i at some point i just looked at that okay so is it um i know that people pass this exam without using that at the omole in was back so now and um i also heard that is um is i can is it registrar or something or um examination board or most of the questions come out from is pack so now and i have created a study plan that's okay i can study pack as well as um some online youtube videos on um, performance management so i want to ask i want to seek your um advice as a professional am i uh, would you advise that i continue the way i have started or i just get an additional because i oh I, I picked from where you said avoid getting too much study material so that you don't get your edge and packed so that's the more reason why i looked at that okay but i don't know i'm just um asking that do you advise that I get at your money was pack or I just continue with the study plan that I have created? All right, all right. I get what you are trying to say. So I'll just give you this advice based on experience. The thing is, and uh, this is something, just give me something to do right now. Uh, maybe later I will do something. Uh, it's very important for you to follow me on LinkedIn because I share I can related content on Wednesdays, every Wednesdays. So I will do something. There are some particular materials that you wouldn't want to do without getting for certain courses. For for example, you're writing PSAV, and um, although I can pack and make you pass PSAV, I'll tell you some particular courses that with I can pack, you pack pass those courses very well. You certainly you pass it. If you're writing PSAV, I can pack is okay for you. But if you want to understand it more, Ari Adams is good for you. PSAV made simple. If you are writing CSME. I'm telling you, you don't have anything, any, any other material. Don't you don't even need any other material? Just focus on that pack. You are going to ace it. If you are writing PM, please do not joke with that Omole and Was test book. Yeah, I'm not, I know what I'm saying. Do not joke with Omole and Was. I'm talking to you from experience because of Adam. I can owes Omole and Was one question every diet. Yeah. I can owes Omole and Was one question every diet, whether SFM or PM. They owe him one question every diet. <laughs> you can quote me. I know what I'm saying because of we have done my research on this, and I've noticed that there's no how they don't test one of these questions. We don't know where it's going to come from, but they owe him one question, whether it's in SFM or PM, right? So please, whatever you are doing, ensure that Omole and Waste's book is with you for PM and SFM. I told you, I don't know if you heard when I said something in my in my when my presentation that when I came out of the exam or Two days after my examination, I went to buy a textbook. What what textbook did I say I got? I got Omole Inwa's textbook. I ate back and front Omole Inwa. In fact, I dismantled the old textbook. So please, if you are writing PM, I don't think I can pack is. You should have nothing to do with I can. I don't really think I can pack will do justice to. The reason why I said it will not really do justice. Take for example, there are some places in under investment appraisal. You will see some of the questions that are there. They are very shallow. They are not typical examination questions, right? If you are looking at some questions on the divisional performance, looking at some questions on the relevant costing, standard costing, you will see that some of those questions are not really, they are not really giving it what you want. So it's very important for you to look out for some study. In fact, go to people that have passed before, ask them what are those particular. So I don't know, PM for me, you need to get a good, um, the, the, what I can pack will help you understand is the basics, the concepts. Imagine, imagine you're writing CR, and you think you want to use CR to CR I can pack to pass I can examination. I'm not saying you will not pass, so you can pass, but it will not. You will not. You might not really get to get. You might not, you might not get those um, proper exam like questions where you have you know Ashme there. You can always get Ashme. You can always um, you can always get 
there, there are a whole lot of um there's this material i used to use the uh, sbr material for um, open tuition right i used to use uh, i used to use bpp right so wh whatever i don't know I, I i would if i feel there are times that certain parts we explain a particular topic more than the way some particular parts i understand uh you know that's when you have enough time right but ensure you know overwhelm yourself with material just focus look at where it's where the two look at it which one is giving you what you want right there are some particular parts that they will not really explain the basics but they are there for questions they will give you what you want for the question meanwhile there are some particular materials that you will understand the basics but the questions might not really be it do you get so every material have what they are useful for so that's what i'll just advise you for that pm please try and get a money in textbook please try and get it for that pm okay sir um thank you uh somebody is asking here that so i think what we'll do right um please after this is the last question i'm taking for today so what we'll do is that i hope all of us are on the community i already dropped the link to the community so i'll send all those questions to mr david probably you will send a voice note and help so this is the last question for tonight okay. so so i'll be taking it in okay, order that's something here. sorry yeah, yeah hey i don't know I if you can just watch for us. The yes, okay okay, okay okay someone is saying Sorry. uh what about um i will talk about all of this those those parts that you can actually use to prepare i would i would um talk about it later let's leave it alone for now let's attend to some other so uh, i'm trying questions. to yeah i'm trying to even get all the questions down like the questions that we might not answer because if we still stay here we won't leave here till 10 o'clock so i've got since honestly, the honestly. many questions so somebody is just asking i think she raised up her hand so it was kike lomo then she typed it in the in the okay. chat room so i'm trying to even okay. okay yeah she said is online class enough for me to pass or i must be present at class so sorry sir before you answer that question this would be my final thought right um please i'll share the community link again all your questions after kike lomo's question i think the next question here is or do I your akin coe if you're on the group i would ensure okay i think we've already done that we've already done kike lomo's question or I'll, I've already copied all the questions down there. I'll ensure that we find time on backer community to attend to it and everybody can even reference it for the future. I'll also get Mr. David's response. Probably we'll do like a VN and I'll send it to the group or something. So I think that's just the last question we are taking for Kike Luma. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. So you can take the mic. Okay. Okay, so um, Kike Lomo, uh, whether you are writing, you are actually paying attention to online classes or physical classes, the major thing is, are you preparing right? Are you doing it the right way? That's the major question. Whether you are reading on your own, whether you are, that's why the thing is, there's no principle to this thing, right? Whether you are reading on your own, you are attending online classes, you are attending physical classes. The major thing is, are you working towards getting that certification are you doing the right thing that you need to do and what's the right thing to do prepare the right way you get so if you are preparing it the right way there are certain topics that are you treating properly do you have a study plan are you is not is hope it's not like you are just having a study plan are you following it judiciously right are you covering necessary gap right there are some certain topics that you should have covered we have about um 80 something days left to the exam now so if you are if you are actually at this level now you should not you should not joke with certain areas of the you know so of the syllabus right if for example you are writing um corporate reporting of fr there are certain standards by now that you should have used to set up the foundation do you get so whether you are writing physical whether you are doing online i don't used to advise people whether they should the major thing is are you achieving what what you should be doing whether you are studying on your own the major aim is are you gaining that thing are you doing that thing that, would, that is necessary for you to pass you need to ask yourself then you need to assess yourself so that's what i'm, I'm going to tell you okay. then i also want to okay. chip this okay. in okay. i saw yeah, a I very important question i even thought someone was going to someone was going to ask so this this would be my last words that i'm going to drop before leaving so um i saw someone saying something that cause combination and all of that see cause combination for um for corporate for professional level if you are the professional level please if you are writing two papers if you want to take only two papers at the professional level ensure those two papers are corporate reporting and auditing i i, I used to tell this a lot because you see those two courses they are very interwoven 
if you are reading for corporate reporting, as uh, so you are reading for auditing, right, and you are not taking corporate reporting, don't be surprised when you are finally taking, uh, sorry, that, that reading for corporate reporting and not taking auditing. When you finally come back to take auditing, you will see yourself still reading for corporate reporting because at times you see during your ISA uh, 200 planning and preparation of the audit and all of that, you are still coming back to, okay, understanding the relevant standards to be used in conducting the audit, understanding the materiality, understanding and all of that. You know, a whole lot of things, many of us doing advanced audit and assurance. So you see sometimes you will even be talking about some particular ISA and you are still in one way or the other talking about IES. Do you get so audit and CR goes together. If you do not take any course, you are taking just two papers. Please ensure you write audit and case study, right? So, but if you are taking three papers, combination is also very important. Combination is very important. You will see some people you want to take SFM and case study together, or you want to take SFM and you know you are taking some courses that we, yeah, you know they are very core and they need to be devoted. They need you need time to devote on them. So take courses that will not really stress you. But I can tell you, it depends on your strength. For me now, uh, I don't like to advise, but at the professional level, I like to advise this. Audits and CR goes very, very well. They are very, very good yeah. together. So and the same thing at the um, skills level, FR and PSAF, they are very good. They go and <laughs> don't drop those two. They are very good together also. Then for the foundation level, if you are taking account, um, you are taking financial accounting, ensure you're also taking bmf too if you are taking financial accounting ensure you're also taking bmf because of there are certain ideas that you need in bmf that you're also going to be talking using in accounting right like you see some ratios you calculate some financial ratios also you can maybe profitability ratios yeah, and all of that it is part of the things that you also be doing in bmf do you get so <laughs> those are the things i can just advise so cost combination depends on your strength also right but there are some courses that goes hand in hand that you need to prepare together for. So that's what I will say. And thank you so much uh, for having me. I really thank appreciate you so much, Mr. I David. Wish you all success. <laughs> yes, thank thank you so much for your time. We can unmute ourselves and like tell him thank you. I already dropped his LinkedIn profile here, yeah. so David, you can also follow so him. It's every Wednesdays or Fridays you drop Friday. posts. Yeah, welcome, drop so welcome so much. Welcome so much. Everyone thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Okay, everyone is there. Everyone, 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 all right. Thank you so All much. Right. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.